Now, a decade ago, our next guest was an 18-year-old university dropout shoplifting food from corner shops to keep his hunger at bay. Well, now, 29-year-old Stephen Bartlett is a multi-millionaire entrepreneur, making history by becoming the youngest ever dragon to join BBC One's hit series, Dragon's Den, and he joins us now. It's lovely to see you. Welcome. Congratulations. Well, yeah. we'll come to that in just a moment, so, because your childhood is, um, is fascinating. Nigerian mum, Esther, um, and, uh, and your dad, who's Graham. You say you were a poor family in a, in a wealthy neighbourhood, but you're not an unhappy family, but no money. Yeah, really, and it's a really unique situation to be in because there was a clear difference in me, in, mm. You know, when I look at my peers, I was the only, really the only black kid in an all-white school of about 1,500 white kids. So I'm already trying to be, to understand why I'm different and to fit in and relaxing my hair so it's straight. Um, and on top of that, we were also, we had no money. So Christmases and birthdays, we didn't have any money to celebrate yeah. them. So I, I'm also contending with the sort of financial um, gap between me and my peers. And all of that's going on at the same time in my life, trying to fit in desperately as we all do on the playground. And it's funny, because as I reflect and, and people say, oh, you're so, you're so ambitious, you're so driven. Um, as I've got older, I've realised that I was probably just insecure. Mm -hmm. And yeah. insecurity is one of the greatest motivators for a lot of people in a really unfortunate way. Um, and I was trying to escape that life and, and fit in. But it, it motivated you from that moment at school because it was even during that time at school that that sort of business acumen started to show. Yeah, I was... I, my parents got to a point where they were so busy. My dad was working five days a week in London, four hours away. My mum can't read or write, so she was literally at one point sleeping in her shop. So I was waking up at 10 years old and, again, you know, I want to I wanna eat today. I want to try and figure out how to get the shoes that the other kids have. And I learned because of that independence, this really important connection that I hope my kids learn, which is if, any, if I'm gonna have anything, it's gonna be di a direct consequence of my behavior. Mm -hmm. So I would wake up and my lunch money would come from me selling something. Or, um, so by the age of 14, I started running the school trips in the school. I, I did a deal with a vending machine company to fit our whole school with vending machines and they were gonna buy them. We got them for free and made commission on every sale. And I got to the point where I was so preoccupied with that not attending my classes, the school were trying to, half the school was trying to expel me, the other half was trying to keep me because I was generating a lot of revenue, um, and I decided that I would, would no longer go to school, so um, I focused on the business stuff. Well, you, wow. you, uh, you actually, because this, this continues, this is extraordinary uh, story, because, I mean, you were in trouble for you know, sort of not attending very much, you went yeah. to Manchester, met um, at a uni, attended one lecture and dropped out, um, and you said, <laughs> it's important to know when to quit. Yeah, I, it's, you know, in our, in our society, we always glamorise starting, right? Starting mm. that new thing and quitting is seen as something that losers do, right? There's a phrase, quitting is for losers. Yeah, yeah, but cool. quitting is the incredibly important thing you have to do before you start. <laughs> they are fundamentally connected and quitting, in fact, being a good quitter, from what I've seen in life, is one of the real arts to getting where you need to be. And I've been just a, this unbelievably peaceful quitter for my entire life. I quit school, quit university after one lecture, started a company, did it for three years, raised investment, quit out the blue, quit my last company, which is generating 600 million in revenue, out the blue, because I knew within me, um, and it's something I write about a lot, that um, I'd overstayed my welcome in that situation and it could no longer serve me. Overstayed your welcome in your head? Well, yeah, I, you. I have this framework in my mind that I've that I that I realised I've ran through um, for my entire life, which is I don't quit things because they're hard, but when things suck and they become not worth the fight it would take to change them, then you have to quit. And I write about this in my book. I, I, wrote, I, I built this framework that I, that, I, that I share, a very simple framework, and I really believe quitting is for winners. It's the incredibly important thing you have to do before you start that new thing, which is going to take you closer to where you need to be. So. Well, what took you closer to where you need to be is spotting an opportunity in the market, and social media sort of yeah. opened up to you. So this was, um, you were, it was the student notice balls, yeah. first of all, and then the social media, that you kind of realised the power of that, and then out of that, this social chain was yeah. born. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was trying to get... I dropped out of university, started the student website, was trying to figure out how to get millions of people to come, but I had about £4,000, which I'd raised as an investment. Spent all that money, as you do, and it's crazy because when you have no money, you get really innovative, you're forced yeah. to. So um, I gave a kid 50 quid for a Facebook page one day, posted on it, realised it was driving thousands of people. So I said to myself, what I need to do is own all the Facebook pages, all the Twitter pages. Went round the country in 2012, 2013, met every young kid that had built big social media pages, seven, eight million followers 
each page in their bedrooms, hired all of them, and that's what created this chain of social media pages. From there, the business went into marketing and started doing the marketing for Amazon, Coca-Cola, Uber, um, all around the world. And then it became an e-commerce company, a media business, and... God, you're today, impressive. It's, uh, it, it's, it is, it oh is mightily impressive. But, I mean, there's, there's one, one thing. You applied to Dragger's Den, forgot you'd applied. I mean, in 10 yeah. years to the day, yeah. you end up being youngest dragon, yeah. um, sitting in between Deborah and Peter Jones, who, who you admire. Yeah. I would have thought, though, aren't the producers of Dragon's Den going to be a little bit worried now, thinking, oh, my God, he could go at any time? Uh, <laughs> I, do you know, I, Dragons is such a huge honour. It's such a... I, I've watched it since I was 12 years old and it just feels like this tremendous honour. And the other word I used to describe it is responsibility because mm. I know I was that 12-year-old kid looking at it, understanding the world of business um, from that show. And I know there'll be other kids, especially kids that come from sort of underrepresented backgrounds that don't have rich families and that might be, you know, certain ethnicities. And they'll they'll be looking up at me. And because I'm there, I think it's a signal, um, because, I, again, I think the most powerful role models are those that are relatable, that w mm -hmm. have walked your path, um, a signal that they can too. So um, I really am just incredibly uh, honoured to be on the show. No suits. No suits. Um, in fact, I had a much more extreme outfit, but it strobed under the light, so I had to change to outfit number two, which is just a kind of like a, a T-shirt shirt thing. Um, and yeah, I really just want to represent my worldview, the people that are like me and young people and, and let them know that there's no stage too big to, to aspire to, I guess. You are very impressive. I mean, oh, that first so time you got your first win on there, the moment that you sort of oh, yeah. took it off the other dragons, that must have been sweet. It was very surreal. Like, I, you, there's, there are small sort of techniques. You've got to say, I'm out. You've got to say your offer in a certain way. And I kind of stumbled through that and I couldn't quite, and then I went to stand up, I don't know, COVID, can't say, you know, and, but um, after a couple, I kind of got found my way. And then once I felt really comfortable in the chair, then I could really, really be myself. Yeah. And that's when I think the show gets particularly interesting because we're exciting. all fighting. Can't and wait competing. to watch it. Well done. Um, you. You, uh, you've, you've got your Diary of a CEO, uh, CEO podcast, been massively successful worldwide. It was huge. Um, and you are taking it on the road next year. Yeah. So I think the tickets go on sale next, next Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday. Next Thursday, yeah. I, um, I love theatre. I love music. I love choir. I love speaking. I love motivational speaking. I love cinema. So we've combined all of them. It's me on stage with this 30. Um, 30 person gospel choir behind me, there's videos, there's special effects. And it's this journey about success and striving, but also about love, heartbreak, rejection, and what I call mature love. It's a two hour show starting at the London Palladium um, next year, and, it pre and it's gonna be um, pretty special. If, you, if you're into that kind of thing and you wanna feel something, especially after two years of not feeling much, yeah. you know, you might cry, you might learn some things, but you'll definitely have a good time. You're amazing. Yeah, God, you really are. And I'm like, I don't care what you're talking about. I'm just going to sit in the front row. I'm going to come. <laughs> just listen to it. Come. Brilliant. Well done, you. You've um, got to get him on your podcast thank now. You. I know, I know, exactly. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, so so thank you so much. Thank you very much thank indeed. You. Yeah, and as we said, the Diary of a CEO UK tour is next year, but the tickets are available next from next Thursday. Thursday.